I am as well, Ben. All righty, clicking the button now. And we're live. Hi, everyone viewing from wherever you may be at this current moment. Uh, welcome to the uh, uh, MSJC Political Science Club's uh, Southern California Community Town Hall. Uh, my name is James Crawford. I'm gonna be the moderator for today. Uh, before we uh, get into all the great questions and, and whatnot uh, planned for tonight, um, I want to quickly introduce um, delegate to the California Democratic Party, uh, Kenya Taylor. She's also the executive board for um, AD 71 uh, for that delegation. Uh, and then also a real quick shout out and thank you to um, all of the MSJC Political Science Club uh, for helping support um, and, and building this event up. And then also uh, to Student Life and Development for helping to facilitate the um, creation of this event. Uh, so um, some guide, uh, just a quick overview of what we're gonna be going over today. Um, so I'm gonna let uh, Delegate Taylor introduce herself in just a second and give us a rundown of what uh, uh, the, the delegation is, what her job is. Um, and then we're, a list of questions um, are going to be um, verbally spoken to Delegate Taylor. Um, and she's gonna have um, as much time as she needs to answer them. Uh, we are gonna be a little bit flexible on time today um, because of some, some sudden changes that happened. Um, and then at the end, she will also be able to give some closing remarks as well. Um, so um, without further ado, uh, Delegate Taylor, would you like to introduce yourself and uh, what the California Democratic Party delegation is? Well, thank you so much for this opportunity today, James. I appreciate the invitation as well as uh, your team for hosting this important event because it's so important to engage the community because a lot of people wanna get involved in politics or they wanna find out more, but they're not quite sure what to do. Again, my name is Kenya Taylor. I live in the San Diego uh, County area. However, some of our area in the 71st Assembly District overlaps with uh, Riverside County. And I'm really uh, honored to be here because in my political life, so much of what I have done has started on college campuses. And when I think about a lot of the leaders, not all are younger in age, but a lot of the most influential leaders of the United States, Martin Luther King, Cesar Chavez, they were all young adults. And it's important to work with like-minded people who have bold and strong leadership so we could get things done. Uh, the role for assembly delegate is something that's a major honor for me. Um, I ran for County Board of Supervisors in San Diego last year. Now, unfortunately, I didn't win, but I received 45,037 votes and I was only 4% behind. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. I think in this pandemic, we need leaders who understand mental health. I also have a certification in primary care behavioral health. I ran for ADEMS because I wanna see more elected leaders that are mindful that we're in a mental health crisis, we're in an economic crisis. My primary care behavioral health background also deals with public health issues. We have COVID. We need leaders who are going to make sure that we have policies that reflect the needs of what's going on today. ADEMs or our assembly uh, delegates are there to elect the Democratic Party leadership, but also figure out the resolutions and vote on those and endorse candidates. We wanna make sure we have candidates who care about the environment. All too often I have college students tell me they're not sure if they should go to school because they hear too often people graduate and they're not able to find a high paying job or they might have to leave and go to another place another city because it's too expensive. And with the great talent that each of you have, we need careers, not just jobs, but careers that can help you stay local if you choose to and thrive and continue to build your families and networks if that's what you choose to do. So I'm excited about being here because we need more people who care. We need to take the environment seriously. 
We need health care for all. And we also need people in leadership that will stop the dysfunction in politics, because for me, it's more out of control now than ever. Thank you for that. Thank you for that, Delegate Taylor. Um, and so with that, uh, we're now going to uh, start jumping into to these questions. And um, a little note for everyone watching at uh, home, your car, wherever you may be. Um, these questions were provided ahead of time uh, to give Delegate Taylor some, some time to, to really think through these. Um, and um, so, yeah. Um, so Delegate Taylor, our first question is, um, in your position of leadership um, within ADEMS, because uh, you also serve on the executive board, how do you think you can prioritize infrastructure problems within your jurisdiction? One of the things that's a major issue for me and so many community members as well is that it's important that we're not the next Flint, Michigan or Paradise, California. We've had too many opportunities where we've seen devastation in communities. Just think a couple of weeks ago, a number of us saw what happened in Texas with their water system. We don't want that to happen to us. Obviously, we've had tremendous fires that have devastated communities. In San Diego, back in 2003, we had the Cedar Fire. Um, up north, we've had the Bonita Fire just a couple months ago. There was the Horseshoe Fire as well. We need people to understand that we can't always have policies that impact the city the same way as our rural communities. I live in an unincorporated area. I don't have a mayor or city council. We're spread out. But unfortunately, the fires normally start in communities like mine. We need to have elected leaders that are going to be mindful so when it comes time to build, we have safe evacuation opportunities. We're not putting our first responders in more harm's way because there's just so much devastation, not to mention the fires are moving faster because of the speed of the wind gusts. And so making sure that we get more preventative opportunities with our electeds is a major priority for me, infrastructure wise. Also, I don't know if any of you have noticed, but we're getting all these small earthquakes. We need to make sure we're building in places that are safe, making sure buildings are retrofitted so um, we don't have more devastation. Also, we need nice roads. Every time it rains, there's more dips and holes in the road. I think I threw off my alignment last week. There was a pothole that wasn't there the night before. I drove the same path the day before, but we really need to have quality building. Um, so we're not damaging our cars, but also infrastructure wise, we need quality schools. We need kids, if they're back in school, they need to be safe. And I do believe in uh, quality healthcare. And so those are some of the priorities, but really focusing and bringing more light to the needs of the rural communities are a major uh, factor and priority for me, as well as not leaving out our suburban and city communities as well. Thank you. Um, and so kind of now building off of that, because uh, you mentioned um, the environment and, and fires, um, last year um, in um, AD 71, um, there actually was um, a, a pretty big fire, the Santee in, in, in Santee, um, that burned 36 acres, right? Um, damaged a lot of people's um, homes and property. Um, on top of all the fires that were happening up north and in central California. Um, knowing this, how can you best address these problems in your position as a, as a delegate to the California Democratic Party? Mm -hmm. One of the first questions I ask anyone who's interested in running for office what are their views on the environment? Because sometimes the planning, the zoning that's occurring impacts more fire opportunities. We need to build smart. And yes, we've had fires um, in Santee. We have them in all of our cities, unfortunately. And especially with the wind gusts, 
the wind's faster and the fires are spreading fast. I had to evacuate about six months ago. There was a fire that started at the bottom of the hill. And somehow with the wind, it just blew up the hillside. And within minutes, people were evacuating. It's important to have party leadership make fire prevention a priority. So the devastation doesn't traumatize anybody else. You know, I understand things happen. Uh, we're focusing on COVID, but at the same time, we have enough subject matter experts out there that could address fire prevention at the same time. So that's a major, major priority for me. Also in my professional world, I, um, whether it's politics, my professional life as a therapist, I bring all this together because right after the Cedar Fire in San Diego in 2003, there were over 270,000 acres that burned. I started working in our rural community shortly after knowing the devastation. But then 2007, we had another big fire. Some people got their home burned down twice. We need more prevention opportunities and we need lawmakers that are going to invest in our diverse and rich and unique communities. People often talk about the rural communities, but I don't see a lot of investment with money and budgets show people's priorities. And so I wanna see our lawmakers make sure that they are providing funds in the individual communities because we deserve the best. Thank you. Um, and um, so kind of switching gears a little bit, um, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, in your position of leadership, Mm -hmm. How can you best advocate for criminal justice reform and security uh, for the safety of our communities, whether it be in 8071 or uh, Riverside County or what have you? Run for office. That's the first thing I'll suggest. Actually, when I ran for office, I mentioned getting 45,037 votes. I'm a first time candidate. I was only 4% behind. People are more mindful now of criminal justice reform issues than ever. And so we have so many allies out there. Everyone wants to be safe in their community. I say run for office because we need people in power that care about people and not prioritize profits over people. And so if you run for office and you believe in people and care about people, you'll have policies that shape that. And I'm a progressive person. I believe in building on grassroots campaigns. There's people of all walks of life that have experience, transferable skills, but most importantly, we need more people in leadership that care. Politicians could tell me anything, but I wanna see what people do. What's the track record of helping others? It's important to see the community have results, solutions for success. And if you run for office, for example, I ran for County Board of Supervisors. Keep in mind, they're over the DA's budget, district attorney's budget. They're over the sheriff's budget, the county jails. Supervisors can determine how much money is allocated to those areas too. It's time for us to start funding our defense attorneys even more. People shouldn't be in jail for 30 years for stealing a pack of gum. We need programs to help people. I think it's very important for us to reshape the way the criminal justice system is because we're wasting a lot of money. It makes absolutely no sense that our county jails or our jails or prison system is the largest mental health program in the country. We need to make sure people could live with dignity and respect. As a mental health provider, people who have been in jail have told me multiple times, 
They just wanted to be able to feed their family. We need those high paying jobs. We need to put those apprenticeship programs back into the schools. I've worked with our community leaders and our elected officials asking questions. How come it takes for a person to go to jail and then be released uh, to have an opportunity to work in some of these building trades? Shouldn't we have prevention programs or apprenticeship programs early? And then people could build their life and not have to go to jail and get involved in some of these high paying careers. To me, it makes sense. But unfortunately, that's not that's not what's happening. And so I encourage people to run for office, ask questions, attend the meetings. There's planning groups. There's boards and commissions. If you can apply. Everyone doesn't apply. It's just like scholarships at college. When you apply, a lot of times people aren't applying. And so they just go to the couple that do. But ask questions, have a mentor, and join a club like this one. Because we're in this together. And the stronger we are, the more we could do. And Let's, you know, make the world stronger in 2022. That wasn't supposed to rhyme. <laughs> it did, but it's important for us to get involved and ask questions. Great. Yeah. And um, I, I appreciate uh, you mentioning running for office and, and our, the, the power of our local politics because so oftentimes they are overlooked. Um, so I, I appreciate that. Uh, so um, Delegate Taylor, how can the Democratic Party uh, address climate change without impacting small businesses? How can we transition from gasoline to electric cars in California, for instance? You know, I've talked to a number of people in our, uh, and have been a part of environmental justice committees myself. We need to start engaging the community in why going from gasoline to electric cars are important. We also need our elected officials to invest in charging stations in some of our communities that aren't directly in a big city because we need those stations in order for things to um, happen in large numbers. Unfortunately, in my area, we don't have sidewalks in all the communities out this way because I'm in the unincorporated area. But we need to start talking to the kids in school. Let them know about green job opportunities. Unfortunately, a lot of these programs have been taken out of our school. There used to be more opportunities where kids would learn about career paths, but introducing green jobs, addressing climate change without impacting small business. I'm a little concerned about that question because I wanna boost more green jobs with small business owners. And so I'm concerned because we need more small businesses to boost the demand to have those electric cars. We need more small businesses that are creating more solar opportunities for the home. We need more people teaching the youth about environmental justice. And so I think it's important that climate change becomes more of a lifestyle versus just something we say. I have a background in primary care health. I used to create pain management programs. I deal with people all the time that have pain. I used to be one of the board of directors for the Lupus Foundation in town. I've seen people recover by eating more organic foods. I want to see more organic farming and people growing um, more natural products, less pesticides. But we need those products. So I am a supporter of small business. I'm a supporter of economic solutions. I'm also a supporter of people um, living healthier and clean lives and removing all these pesticides 
out. But I think we have to take a stand regardless of a person's political affiliation. If somebody tells me they're, they have asthma or chronic lung disease, they're not asking me about political affiliation. They wanna be able to breathe. And I think we need common sense laws and regulations so people can be safe and thrive and we decrease also these health disparities that are going on too. So I would just definitely um, say we need changes, but we need drastic changes to boost our economy in a green friendly, eco-friendly way. But also we need to be mindful of educating our youth. So as they get older, it's more of a lifestyle for them. Because right now, what we talk about in our clubs, when we talk to um, community members, they're not hearing the same messages that we get in the clubs all the time. Yeah, th thank you for that. Um, and then Delegate Taylor, um, in your role um, in ADEMS, how can you see either yourself or ADEMS as a whole um, advancing equity and economic opportunities um, in, in, in the near future? Um, we could start today. One of the first things we could do is sign up for our local electives email distribution list. Find out what's going on in your community. Um, we had an election here in San Diego last night for Assembly uh, 79. There's a lot of people that advocate for policies, but what I'm noticing, sometimes people have support, but if they're not in the area that they could vote in, they need to garner more support in that area because their voice isn't heard when it comes time for voting. And so it's important to build coalitions, build partnerships. Talk to people of all ages. I wanna see a closure in uh, generational gaps. There's so many of us that um, use technology. Now, believe it or not, I'm not as technology friendly as a lot of people. Now I'm a, a Gen Xer, right? I don't always use social media like a lot of people because as a therapist, a lot of what I do, most of what I do is confidential, right? And so I have to be mindful of what I do and I'm not on the computer all the time. But I know there's people who are older than me who don't have an email address. We need to figure out opportunities for those that wanna get a COVID vaccination, everyone doesn't have internet access. Everyone can't read what's on the screen because there could be sight issues. Obviously we sometimes have language barriers too. We need to make sure we have trusted community partners like yourself helping to get the word out to our parents, to our grandparents. If anybody has grandchildren, them as well. It's important to not use the same approach for everybody. Now, I have a diverse network of friends, all backgrounds, just any demographic you could possibly name. It's important to get more people involved, but also hear their story. Because when people talk about um, using public transportation. When you live in an area where there's not a lot of public transportation and it takes about 30 minutes to walk, we need a different plan for the people geographically. Sometimes there's hubs that you could meet that will take you to the city, but we need more innovation. And we also need to listen to what the community says versus our politicians thinking they have all the answers. The people have the power and we need to listen to our community members and do more of what our community members want. Just like when we think about homelessness, 
people keep saying, oh, we'll give them a therapist. And I keep saying, no, let's give them a locked door first. Everyone doesn't need a therapist. And so sometimes building on those solutions for success, but we also need to evaluate what's working and what's not. You know, I'm, I'm not into this new call out culture that's there. I know sometimes we have to talk about things, but it's not always what you say, it's how you say it. And we need to build more alliances, stay true to what our values are. But I think it's time for us not to settle for mediocrity any longer, you know. The environment is out of control. Drug addiction is out of control. Mental health is out of control. COVID out of control. I'm not trying to play the blame game, but what I wanna do is see more solutions for success so we could all thrive in our communities. And insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting to get a different result. Sometimes we have to shake things up. We need bold leadership. We need inclusion of all people. And so, you know, we're seeing things happen slowly, but it's important for people to acknowledge and celebrate those who choose to love somebody who is their choice, you know? not telling people we've been doing things this way for 30 years, 50 years, 100 years. It's we're in a new day and we need to celebrate diversity. Yeah, I think you bring up a lot of great points um, in your answer with that, uh, Delegate Taylor. Um, So so thank you and thank you for sharing um, all of that with us. Um, So kind of crazy, we're already to the last question. Um, I. It went by very fast, like I said, some last minute changes for anyone watching at home. Um, So Delegate Taylor, um, for those of uh, you who don't know at home, um, uh, this last year, or I guess actually it was this year, uh, Delegate Taylor um, and her, I believe your entire progressive slate was elected to the ADEM delegation. Uh, And so with that, uh, what is your slate's top priority um, I know that's sort of like a, a, a big question, uh, right? But what is, um, you know, your top one or two priorities and how do you plan on addressing these priorities and, and carrying them out? Yes. Well, we've had wonderful um, leadership for ADEMs already who are strong progressives. And so I thank them for even acknowledging the work that I was doing and inviting me to be on the slate. It's important for us to have Medicare for all. Let's have access. You know, for us, we will stand up and say Black Lives Matter, and we're not afraid to say that. We will also say that it's important for us to be inclusive to everybody. We also believe that we need drastic environmental changes. We don't want to see money uh, or campaigns that are endorsed by fossil fuel companies. Now, some people do. And you know, people have to do what's best for them. But for us, we want to see a cleaner environment. Because if not, you know, people will die. The temperatures are changing. The weather's out of control. We want to make sure that people are able to live. The environment needs healing and we have to act accordingly if we are going to be around, you know, in a few decades. Already we're seeing more and more people, I'm seeing more people of color with skin cancer now. We're not hearing a lot about it right now because of COVID, but There's just so much, many pollutants in our environment. We want to see the criminal justice funding change. The allocations should be different. We want to reimagine the criminal justice system and be there so that um, people are treated with dignity and respect and people have opportunities to purchase homes. 
We want to make sure people aren't dumping toxins in our community. We want to make sure our veterans are taken care of too. We have a lot of veterans in our district. We want to make sure we have quality child care. We want to make sure that our children have access to quality education, that we have technology capabilities for all our families. We even want to see kids with internet access, our older adults with internet access. And so, as I mentioned, with the 71st Assembly District, we want to make sure that the unique needs are taken care of. These fires are hopefully preventable, but we need people to have access to the necessary resources to make sure we're not the next Paradise, California. We've had issues with water. We don't want to be the next Flint, Michigan. We saw what happened in Texas about two weeks ago. We don't want the whole system to crumble, but we all want to be safe and we want to thrive and have access. And we believe in inclusive leadership and we celebrate diversity. And I'm, I'm really honored because um, there's so much richness in our own unique backgrounds. We're all different, all you know, but we respect each other and we learn from one another. And I think one of the greatest um, assets is to be able to listen and learn. Oh, I'm just so honored to be a part of the slate and our entire, all 14 of us got in. And um, we're, we're bold, we're brave, but we are really there to fight for justice for all and not have anybody left behind because we all matter. Thank you for that. Um, and so um, Delegate Taylor, since we are now at, at the end, um, I wanna just give you a, a few moments to share any closing thoughts, any um, closing remarks. Um, if there's a place where people can follow your delegation um, or you um, individually, uh, feel free to share that. Um, and I'll give you a few moments to do so. Okay. Well, again, I thank you so much for your time today and for this invitation to be a part of the Southern California Community Town Hall. I also want to thank you, James, for the invitation and thank Jose and Nick and Susanna as well for um, being there to lead this great discussion. Student life matters. Being safe on campus matters. Uh, having things in order so we could thrive as students matters. And your leadership is well noted. So thank you for all you do. Um, I'm on Facebook, Kenya Taylor. That's my name. Also, our group, we have ADEM 71. We have a couple groups out there. We talk about different things. But what we also like to know are what other things are going on. One of the strongest things that I would like to mention in closing is what we could do because some of our area overlaps with yours and build stronger partnerships. Because the stronger coalitions we have, the more we could do collectively. And so there's strength in numbers. Although we're down here, you just write up the 15, you know, a couple exits here and there to get where we need to go. But we have your back and we know you have ours and we wanna see some drastic changes. We wanna make sure that our 2022 election runs safe. Everyone has access to vote. Many of you probably heard of what happened in Georgia where there's so much voter suppression going on. There's a lot of work to do and we can't get comfortable, unfortunately. I also wanna build on the allyships that we have. Um, as a black woman living in, I live, you know, I'm in 
Daryl Issa is my congressman. Duncan Hunter was my congressperson. Not a lot of people that look like me, but people know I have bold ideas because I don't believe in mediocrity. I wanna see us succeed. We need to make sure that we build on our alliances and networks, but also please let us know what we could do to support our students. My first job was in a financial aid office on a college campus. I loved it. The prices are going up. Textbooks are astronomical in prices sometimes, right? And so if there's things that we could do, we have connections. We have people that we know all throughout the state. Let us know what we could do to support you because we're in this together. And if one part suffers, we all suffer. And so I encourage you to reach out to me. Um, also, you could email me at Kenya Taylor Cares, uh, C-A-R-E-S at gmail.com. Feel free, let's chat because I look forward to listening and learning and doing more because the 71st, you know, it's part Riverside County, it's part San Diego. We're in this together. And I think it's important for us to build on what we're starting today. So thank you, or not just today, James, you've been an advocate for San Diego for some time, but we definitely need to support you so much more <laughs> and so many of you as well. Well, thank you, Delegate Taylor. Thank you, thank you for that. Um, and so um, as we're closing out here, I again wanna thank the MSJC Political Science Club um, for, for helping uh, create this event and helping um, support me and reaching out to everyone. Um, and also for student life and development for helping facilitate this, offering a, so much um, uh, useful support um, and, and guidance in this. Um, and then also uh, I wanna thank everyone at home for or your car or wherever you may be uh, for uh, tuning in and listening to this. And I hope everyone now um, has a better understanding of, our, of the importance of our local politics and our local government. Um, again, um, you can, uh, uh, if you're interested in joining the, joining the Political Science Club, you can find us on the MSJC homepage or you can always uh, reach out to me. Um, and uh, with that, uh, we are going to call it uh, end to night one of our Southern California Community Town Hall. And I hope to see or not see virtually uh, interact with um, some of you all next uh, Wednesday for our night two with um, some very lovely board members uh, of MSJC who will be present. Um, again, 3.30 to 4.30 next Wednesday, uh, night two of our Southern California Community Town Hall. Thank you everyone and have a great rest of your night. Thank you.